Hello, Sire. It's been on our radar for a bit. Today we're going to take a look at the Larry Carlton line of guitars from Sire, so stay tuned. Hey, you're watching Alamo Music TV. My name is Chris McKee. And I'm Cooper Greenberg. We're here with Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas, and you can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you are new to the channel, subscribe, turn on notifications, and like our videos. If you want to support the channel, visit our spring store link below for custom swag, and check out our podcast, The Fretboard Conventional, uh, Conventional, wherever you get your podcast. If you want to support Cooper and I, we can send, give you the address to send payments to cash, things like gift cards. But they have to say... Sire. Sire. So today... <laughs> Hello, Sire. Today we're looking at the Larry Carlton line of guitars from Sire. Now, if you are not familiar with Sire, it's a fairly young guitar company. It's kind of come on the scene. From what I understand, the founder built guitars when he was in college with his friends and whatnot. And they started with the Marcus Miller basses, which have been very, very well received. The whole idea is to partner with a well-known uh, artist who wants to do some really cool things with guitars and develop really good guitars at a low price point. And uh, that's always an intriguing proposition. I think a lot of companies want to do that to try to give you a lot of value mm -hmm. because how do you how do you fight against the big boys? Offer something different. Yep, offer something different and uh, and try to beat them at their own game. So a lot of value for the money is the name of the game here. The big feature is price. Um, and there are some really cool things that are going on with these guitars. It's also interesting, all their electric guitars and the acoustic guitars, they're all uh, in line with um, with Larry Carlton, you know, Mr. 335 himself. So this is going to be uh, modeled after that with, of course, a S-style guitar and a T-style guitar, as so many other companies are producing. Yeah. I want to see Gibson do an S-style guitar and see what happens in a T-style guitar. Uh, see how many lawsuits With occur. a sound port. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So uh, let's talk about them, about some of the features, and uh, we're going to run through them. Yeah. And uh, yeah, give, give you our take. Currently, by the way, we are not uh, dealers for Sire. That might actually potentially change. Who is to say? Yeah. Obviously, the best way for us to know if our customers would be interested is if you watch this video, let us know what you think, and then say, yeah, I'd like to be able to purchase a Sire yeah, sure. um, from, from you. They don't have a ton of dealers. And I mean, I think it's always nice to have options because a lot of people come in the store, they need a quality electric guitar under $500 um, or under $1,000 if we're talking about that one. But um, there's fewer and fewer options. Yeah, prices for, keep creeping for up. For something that I, I would say is good quality for under $500. Now enter the S3 and the T3. Mm -hmm. Both of which are new models with mm -hmm. Sire. Uh, so the S7 was the original uh, version and there's a classic and a uh, flame top version of this guitar. This is more stripped down. Same thing with the Telecaster. Yeah. More of a stripped down classic Strat and Tele style. So over here, I mean, this guitar is $399, first off. $399. How much again? This guitar is $399. And it's kind of crazy. You've got a humbucker in there. You have one volume, one tone, no second tone, but your normal five way switch. Um, the, I think the most noticeable thing for me playing these guitars and my biggest gripe with other electric guitars that are $399 are sharp frets. Yeah. And these are very well rolled fret edges, which that alone right there is awesome. This is an actual rosewood board. Yep, it's not Indian Laurel, it's not Palferro, it's rosewood. This is rosewood, satin finished neck that feels good. Um, and then somebody got a hold of an Ultra and programmed their CNC machine to do a contoured heel, um, this kind of lower horn carve right there. This, if you switch that, I mean, this is still thicker, thicker yeah. than an Ultra, but that's the basic idea of the Fender Ultra stuff. It feels good. It looks good. It's very contoured. According to the website, the specs uh, of the body is it's a mahogany body. Uh, so. These are built in Indonesia. Uh, Sire is headquartered in Miami, Florida. Um, it's a really well done body of mahogany. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not basswood or anything like that. Not that there's anything wrong with basswood. It's not super heavy, mm -hmm. not way too light like a basswood guitar would be. Yeah. 
Um, and then you got some regular six in line tuners that uh, the, the thing that Chris and I both noticed, there's no string tree on either of these guitars. Yeah, so, and we compared it to a Fender. So what they've done is they've taken and they've brought the headstock back a bit more yeah. so that they can you know have the angle without the string tree. Looking at the strings, I will say, I still kind of go, is that enough angle? But they seem to work fine. Oh, wait, wait, bring, bring the strap back because um, I wanted to point some things out. So Hold things that I'm a fan of or, or things that I just noticed. And I, and I want to say these in the video because Sire's website doesn't point these out. I can hold so the same thing that you talked about with the headstock, right? Uh -huh. That's not really discussed. That's a feature. That's a build design, all right? So yeah. I don't know why they don't talk about that. So there's no string trees, which is important because if it's got enough breakover angle, it's gonna sound great, you're not gonna have tuning issues, and there's not a string tree to cause additional friction with the strings where you'd have intonation issues. So that's good, particularly on a guitar that's set up with a tremolo. You mm -hmm. know, so this has a two-point modern style tremolo, blocked saddles on it. Who makes the hardware? We don't know. You know, it's this has similar hardware to what you might find on a lot of import guitars, kind of nameless manufactured hardware, uh, but maybe a spec up from what you'd normally find on most $400 guitars for sure. The knobs feel good, the switching feels good, the bridge looks and feels pretty good. The pickups are interesting. Again, not much is discussed about the pickups, but it is an HSS configuration. We don't know what the magnets are, but you notice something about the magnets? They're not... Uh... They're not staggered. Staggered, yeah. Yeah, they're not staggered, and they're you know beveled. What this means. <laughs> they're not. <laughs> That's the universal line for staggered. Um, so they're not staggered. They're not um, flat top. They're kind of beveled. They're very. They remind me a lot of like '70s single coil pickups. Yeah. Um, and I really like the tone, which we'll you know hear later on. Um, comes in a variety of colors, including Dakota Red Cooper. Um, Boom. So. Really a great guitar. Wonderful sticker on it. Says it was built with Joy. She's probably the line manager. So good job, Joy. They uh, they made it. Joy good did guitar. a good job on that one. You'll find the same sticker on this T3, which is much like the S3. Looks a lot like guitars that we're familiar with. I just wondered about the name when they got when they decided to name it T3. Did they get a letter from Taylor? Well, Taylor discontinued the T3, <laughs> I know, so it's I up know, for I grabs. Just you know. So. Um, this comes with a Bigsby as well, the T3B. Yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, so, yeah, this also, very cool guitar. Similar kind of contour on the back, but we all notice the yeah. the edges themselves are very round, very comfortable. This one also has very beveled uh, rolled fret edges, and I think they, on the website, they have kind of a diagram of yeah. So it's edgeless, like it's the know. edgeless uh, fretboard. Uh, all of their guitars feature it. So the H7 that I'm holding also has that. And yeah, the what they show you is effectively the design where they've taken and they've rounded the edges, and of course they've rounded the fretwork uh, yeah. as well. <clears throat> so this one um, sounds a lot like a Telecaster. Go figure. Yeah, and um, it it feels good. Just like the Strat style, the S style, uh, you know, the pickups work in the exact same way that you'd expect. Three-way switch, volume, and tone. Um, you know, Chris was in here when I was shooting the demos. He made a comment about this metal position you'll hear in the demos, but they just sound really good. They sound, I think these guitars are a great candidate, you know, the Strat and Tele versions. Um, good candidates for those type of videos where you blindfold somebody, make them play it, and see, you know. What is it? What is it, or how much do you think this guitar costs? Yeah. Um, they tuned up very easily. They, there was no kind of and there was no off how? sounds. You know, <laughs> staggered static, that's my new band. Um, so yeah, I think name. both of these are, are total winners. Now this is not the three, and this is not a $399 guitar. Right. So this one's more expensive. It goes for just above seven hundred dollars. This is the H7, and this is more in line with Larry. What Larry Carlton is known for. He is called Mister Three Thirty Five. Most of those licks that you hear on like the the classic old, 
you know, Michael Jackson and Joni Mitchell stuff. Yeah, was, don't confuse them with Mr. 305. Uh, yeah, different. Mr. 305 is different. Um, this is actually more like a 355 in a lot of ways. Yeah. So, you know, we, we clearly have inspiration from a Gibson here, as he's been known to play. You've got your uh, all-maple semi-hollow uh, electric guitar with two humbuckers. You've got your typical you know, three-way toggle, two tones, two volumes. It's got a beautiful figured top on it. Um, the back is plain, which is a little different. Um, I'm guessing just to keep price down. I don't know. But I like the figure, uh, the figure on the top, and I like the finish with the sunburst. You've got a block uh, inlay going up a bound uh, fretboard here. That's made of ebony. Yeah. So those are rosewood, and this is ebony, which is uh, nice. Again, nice. harder and harder to find in <laughs> yeah. many Well, guitars, usually yeah. it's such an upcharge. You want ebony on an electric guitar. For some reason, Taylor can do it on a baby Taylor, but you want ebony on an electric guitar, it's going to cost you $7,000. Um, well, they didn't uh, take over an entire plant <laughs> in Cameroon, so... True. Uh, so you've got a very non-Gibson headstock. Actually reminds me a little bit more of Godin um, on the headstock. Let's let the lawsuits fly. Um, but three to a side, which is keeping with this guitar versus the typical inline six on the Stratton Tally style or S and T style. So nobody gets sued. Some of the things that make this a little bit more like a 355 though is the purfling um, on the side, the bound F holes, which I really like. You know, there's something, I know it's historic, but I, I remember looking at some 335s going, why couldn't they just bound the F-holes, you know, for that much money? It seems like, it's a little thing. It doesn't matter at the end of the day, but it looks nice. It's like a finished touch. Um, and I like the block uh, inlay that's on here. But did I mention it has an ebony fingerboard? Now, they, it is a bound neck. Unlike Gibson, they're not uh, doing the binding over the fretboard, or the frets, rather, so you don't have those little nibs on the end. It's like with most guitars, the fretboards uh, or the frets are on top. Um, and it also is rounded and yeah. it feels really, really nice. So I'll tell you what, we're going to listen to each of these and then I'm going to nitpick on the other side. So stick around for that. Thank you. 
All right, so there you have it. You've heard the demos of all of the guitars, and frankly, they're all really pretty good sounding guitars. Yeah. Particularly, I mean, we could say particularly for the money, but just period. Yeah. I think the the uh, T three and the S three sound really good. I do like the uh, the humbucker and the bridge. Yeah. On the uh, S three, it sounds great. It's like it's having a built in overdrive. You can just you know switch to that. You've got more gain. But when you go to that second position, you can still dire straits all day. Oh yeah, for sure. And. <clears throat> Not to get too, you know, there's a video about Sia, but um, in our store, typically somebody asks for a guitar under a certain price point. Um, as many people probably do, my first thought is Squire makes a great electric guitar at that price point. A classic vibe Squire is more than this guitar that I have right here, which is wild. Um, Did not used to be the case. Didn't used to be the case. However, I would say, um, most people out there probably watching YouTube, probably finding Sire, are seeing these videos about what is the best value guitar in a certain price range. And these are made in Indonesia. Um, pretty much everything you get in this price range is going to be made in China, was, Indonesia. Or say, maybe right next to the Squire factory. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I think like this absolutely goes toe to toe with the nicest classic vibes that I've ever played. And maybe kind of punches above the weight class. I think the HSS kind of S style is is the one out of this three that I would take. But I want to hear your nitpicks. Sure. By the way, I noticed they have kind of chunky uh, strap buttons, which I like. This is the chunky monk right there. Well, you want to keep the strap on. That's the whole point. So uh, keep let's the talk... strap on and bind your f holes. <laughs> let's talk about some <laughs> nitpicking stuff. Um, I don't know how the setup on this is. I, from playability standpoint, it's great. The pickups seem a little bit low, particularly the neck pickup. Um, I think that's an important aspect of how it sounds. And if there's one complaint I had of the tone of any of the guitars, I thought the bridge pickup on the H7 was a little harsh for what I want to hear out of a humbucker 335 style guitar. Um, further nitpicks. They all have bone nuts on them, which is really cool for the price point. Um, this nut seems massive. I don't know, that's kind of nitpicky. It just seems like a really chunky nut. I don't know why. Uh, there's nothing wrong with the intonation, and I'm again, it's nitpicking. Uh, the tuners are fine. They're non-branded tuners. We had no issues with them whatsoever. Um, you know, if they ever do some upgraded stuff, it might be nice to see something that's... To like see Grover's on there. Grover or something, or something to that effect. The fret action is good on this guitar. The fret work at the top of the guitar, um, like many set neck guitars, is where I can see like where a lot of the issues take place. And the reason is because that's really easy to do. You're fretting it before it's on the instrument, no problem. Here, you're typically fretting it after it's made. And so, and this is true of just about every set neck guitar I've ever looked at, including Gibson Les Pauls of, of uh, ex astronomical price you can just tell the inconsistencies so between these guitars this one is more expensive but i can see more inconsistencies on the fretwork on this guitar mostly because it's set neck and because it is a bound uh fretboard and so those things just kind of come out um, again nitpicky it doesn't get in the way of playing and it's really not that bad i've seen worse on higher end guitars um, there's some finish issues with the knobs which is weird if you look at the, do you see that? Uh -huh. There's kind of some weirdness with the way that the tone knob um, for the neck pickup is. So everything else is nice and glossy and this one got hit with the ugly stick. Um, you know, it just shouldn't have gone through QC, should have gotten a new knob, not that big of a deal. Outside of that, all of the binding is perfectly clean. The finish looks really, really good. I'm sure it's a nice thick poly finish. Um, the inside lines are something I always pay attention to when I'm looking at like a semi-hollow guitar and it's nice and clean in there. Cleaner than a vintage Gibson or a G Gretsch. If you know, you know. You should look inside an old Brooklyn built Gretsch someday. They are not that clean. Um, so yeah, I mean, all in all, it's a really nice guitar. Those are my nitpicks. On those guitars, I don't really have a whole lot of nitpicks. I don't either. I think that... Um... One thing I mentioned to Chris after I filmed the demos was it is easier for me to 
tell an inexpensive semi-hollow or hollow body guitar versus an inexpensive solid body guitar. Now, times are changing and it becomes more and more easy to identify really inexpensive um, solid body, I mean, really inexpensive anything. There's a lot of stuff that we see sometimes and not even always at our store. Sometimes I play guitars that friends own or I'll be at a different shop or whatever and try something out and I'm like, how did this even make it past QC? You know? Actually, I do have a nitpick on those guitars. It was the same. Was the first thing I noticed out of the box, and I noticed on this, uh, they could use a fret dressing. Frets are yes. just a little scratchy, but not really bad. Yeah. So. And again, sadly, something to be expected sometimes from um, from inexpensive guitars. Yeah. Um, I do think that these, like I said, if you blindfolded me and guessed how much, you know, asked me to guess how much these cost, I would probably guess that these are seven to eight hundred dollar guitars. Um, and I would really now like to just see everything else in the line, yeah. the, the kind of higher end S and T style. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm impressed. I had never played a sire before today, and I'm I'm impressed. I think they're cool. Well, what's further impressive that we should you know make sure that we do say is these are right out of the box. So there's mm -hmm. been no setup that's been done on these, mm -hmm. and I kind of wonder if some of what I want out of these pickups could have to, I mean, look how low the neck pickup is. Yeah. Um, might be changed with, with a proper setup with these. Um, you know, and I, we have no idea about anything with these pickups because yeah. Sire's really not saying. But, you know, if you're gonna, <laughs> you have to nitpick at this price because they are just a really, really good deal. So, yeah. at the end of the day, I think that's our take on these guitars. For sure. Good job, Sire, and look out uh, everybody else. Yeah. Thank you, Sire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're cool. If you want to learn more about the guitars, where do they go, Chris? Because I don't know. <laughs> so I'm going to say go to our website. Um, we won't necessarily have listings for them. This is a big up in the air thing. So as you're watching this, we're going, ah, you know, we really like these guitars. I think maybe we want to carry these guitars. Does Sire want us to carry these guitars? We'll find out. By the time we put out this video, we'll hopefully have an answer. So if you see them on their, our website, there's your answer. And if not, we'll do a blog post and talk about them. Uh, nonetheless, you know, we do like to review guitars on this channel that we don't always carry. Um, one, because we're guitar players. And two, these are for your benefit so that you know uh, what's what out there. Uh, it's harder and harder, from what I hear in comments from people, to find a, a nice guitar store where you live and try stuff out. And so we try to kind of fill that need as best we can for you. So yep. there you have it. So you can go to alamomusic.com and you'll find something. I promise. <laughs> but I'd like to hear your comments uh, about what you think of these guitars. You know, it is a crowded market. You know, honest reaction when we first unboxed these was, Another Strat style guitar, another Tele style guitar. There are fewer kind of semi hollow guitars out there. You know, we already carry stuff from, of course, Gibson and Epiphone and Gretsch and Ibanez that are in this, uh, you know, price point and market. But th these are just really, really well done guitars that I yeah. think in their own way offer a little something different. I would like to see, particularly on those, Squire maybe fill out the feature set on the website because there's little things that um, I think they would benefit. They don't even talk about the back carves on the website. Yeah. It's just, it's that's their style of bo body. And um, it's cool. that's crazy to me. You guys should put it on your website. That's all I'm saying. You know, if you need marketing advice, I can consult. Let me know. <laughs> so if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe, turn on notifications, and like our videos, and keep coming back for more. And we'll see you next time.